The lion diet, also known to some as a modified carnivore diet, is a diet some have used to see impressive weight loss. I've seen many claims of quick losses like 15 pounds in two weeks, and even popular psychologist Jordan Peterson claimed on Joe Rogan's podcast he lost 50 pounds as well as curing many health conditions like acid reflux, snoring, psoriasis, and noticing less anxiety. So is the lion diet the solution you're looking for to finally lose the weight? Let's dig in and see. Hey, this is Colin DeWitt. If you're looking to go from overweight and exhausted to in great shape, full of energy and loving life, then make sure you subscribe today and click on that bell notification and I'll help you finally get there. So I recently heard about this diet and to be honest, usually whenever I hear anything about any kind of diet with a name, I think, okay, here's the next fad. But at the same time, I feel like it's my duty to be informed and I just wanna make sure you have all the options available. So as I dug into this diet, the first thing I wanna mention is it's really meant more for like an elimination diet Diet to find out different types of food sensitivities, possibly helping with things like autoimmune health conditions, and it's not necessarily intended for weight loss. But that doesn't mean it can't be a tool for weight loss. In fact, there's a pretty good chance if you follow this diet, you probably will lose weight. The question is if it makes sense, and we also need to talk about some of the negatives that could come along with it, which I'm gonna get to in a minute. But hey, as I mentioned in the beginning, Jordan Peterson lost 50 pounds with this diet, but even he said it's not necessarily a diet he would recommend for other people. Disclaimer number two. I am not recommending right. this to anyone. Him and his daughter did it together to help with an autoimmune disease. Also, if you're trying to do it to find food sensitivities, honestly, I think there's better options out there. Personally, I would rather go with something like a low FODMAP diet, which actually that's something I did many years ago when I was struggling with a lot of digestion problems. And it's how I found out that I actually have a gluten intolerance or actually more specifically a wheat intolerance. If you're interested in a video about how I went through this and what it entails, let me know in the comments and perhaps that's something I'll do in the future. But while while a low FODMAP diet is still pretty exclusive, it's way more inclusive than the lion diet. But hey, you didn't even come here for that. You came here to lose weight. So let's get into what this diet is and what you eat. And honestly, it's about as simple as it gets. You basically just eat beef. I mean, you eat ruminant meats, which that is mostly beef. It could be other things like sheep and goats, but for the most part, you're just eating cow and basically beef and fatty beef. And you also consume extra salt and water. That's it. The reason they say to eat extra salt with it is because if you only eat meat, you'll lose a lot of electrolytes, which salt is actually an electrolyte. Now you may be thinking, isn't that just basically the carnivore diet, which is very similar. It's just a modified version of it. So instead of carnivore, where it's basically mostly animal products and a lot of different meats, as well as fish and eggs and things like that, this is just basically strictly beef. But with all that being said, what I really wanna dig into deeper here is if it's a good weight loss solution for you. And what you need to consider first is the difference between weight loss and fat loss because they aren't necessarily the same thing and what you're really looking to lose is body fat. And the thing with this diet, with it only being beef, is you're gonna get no carbohydrates whatsoever. What happens is you consume carbs, your body breaks that down into glucose. That glucose is then stored in your muscles and liver to be used for future energy. And your body can hold around four or 500 grams of glycogen. And not only that, every gram of glycogen is also accompanied by three grams of water. So if you reduce all carbohydrate sources, you're gonna lose a lot of glycogen and a lot of water with that. So in the beginning stages, you can absolutely lose 10, 15 pounds in the first week or two pretty easily just through water weight alone, but that doesn't mean you've lost body fat. Sure, some of it's probably gonna be fat, but a lot of it's just gonna be water, at least in the initial stages. And especially if you stop this diet and bring carbs back in again, that weight's just gonna come right back. But yes, after those initial stages and you've gone through that water weight, then you're gonna start tapping more into fat cells but the whole reason you're losing this is because of a calorie deficit you've created, most likely because honestly, meat and protein in general makes you feel full, therefore you consume less calories, therefore you lose fat because of the calorie deficit. But you have to consider there's also dangers of going too low calorie, especially for a long time. Your body's gonna make some alterations to adapt to this. So not only do you see negative adaptations to your hormones, your metabolic rate drops, you're more likely to lose lean 
body mass, and this all leads to a higher potential for rapid weight regain if and when you stop this diet. Now I will say this, at least when it comes to this diet, you're less likely to lose more lean body mass than with other low calorie diets because you're gonna be getting so much more protein. But the biggest thing you need to consider, not only with this diet, but any other diet you're considering, is when you go on any kind of quick fix or crash diet or any extreme method of weight loss, you don't wanna look only at what you're going to do to lose the weight, you have to consider what you're going to do when the weight is gone too, because you can't just go back to what you were doing. If you do that, you're gonna return back to normal with a much slower metabolism, the weight's gonna come back on super fast, and you literally would have been better off not even starting to begin with, than losing it, and then just gaining it right back, because the more times you diet, the more difficult it becomes to lose weight more in the future. If you're someone who's had a lot of yo-yo dieting, I'm sure this is something you've seen. Each time you come back, it gets harder and harder. So to me, the most important thing to consider when starting this diet or any other diet, is this something you can keep doing for the rest of your life? Because if it's not, it's not going to work. And I think personally, for most people, this diet will not be sustainable. I mean, when it comes to sustainability, the website for this diet itself says to get the food you don't really want to eat out of your house because cravings can and will get really bad. And I just talked about this in my previous video about how cravings are usually much worse when you say you can't or shouldn't have something. As soon as you say you can't have it, you want it more. And if you're eliminating not only all your favorite foods, but literally everything except for one type of food, even if you're only doing this short term, what are those cravings going to be like when you're finally done? Can you see how it'd be so easy to rapidly gain weight afterwards because you're going to want anything and everything because you're probably so sick of just having those foods. Now everyone's different and I know some people love like the carnivore diet which is very similar and it works great for them in fact I even have a client who does carnivore herself. I still give her numbers, we still track her intake, but she has an autoimmune disease and she found that it helped her tremendously so it was worth it to her. But if you do have a poor relationship with food, if you're currently looking at foods as either good or bad, it's probably a terrible option for you. And if you wanna end this and finally create a healthy relationship with food, then what you need to do next is check out this top video and I'll talk about some strategies you can use to finally create that good relationship. Otherwise, I think you like this bottom video instead and I'll see you you in one of those other videos.